Okay, I say it's time now. Is everybody good? Okay, I'd like to call to order uh, our final public hearing on the town budget this evening. And we'd like to begin by saying a Pledge of Allegiance. Ask everyone to stand, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And then we'd like to invite the public. Um, comments are welcome on any portion of the budget. We'll be talking about the operating budgets and the capital budgets tonight and um, voting on them, we hope, because um, we plan on this being our final hearing. Um, and so we'd like to invite you up to speak. Please give your name and your address, and we ask you to limit your comments to three minutes, please. Who'd like to start? Okay. Uh, do you want, is there a microphone for that? How do, how do we know about the changes that have been made in the budget? We're going to be talking about something we don't even have any knowledge of. I don't think I really know. What if anything has changed? Um, Would you present your budgets to us and let us know what's going on? This is the changes. I haven't seen that. It's hot off the press. So, um, just before you start, I, I think that was a reasonable request very, um, very much. What have we done in the interim? Right. So, so because this is our third public hearing, um, what we have done is um, we had a net shortfall of 310? 15, Okay, thank you. No, um, 15, uh, that we came up with after we got in the final governor's budget. So as everybody may recall, we deferred voting on it at the last time because there was a lot of talk about the potential of losing a lot of money. And net-net, um, after everything was done, uh, Simsbury lost about 240. 40,000, 260,000. And um, then when we rejiggered our tax mill rate worksheets to see what we would take if we wanted to stay flat with no tax increase, and we always have started out looking at things that way to see if it's doable, we, um, we then found a way to make that happen. So we're still looking at um, it's using a bit of reserves and there's some excess in the non-lapsing account on the Board of Ed side from this year and we're looking at um, some slight changes. Um, it's basically taking out the scanners on the town side and it's taking out um, OPEB calculation for what we're required to put in there according to the actuaries got finalized too in the interim time and that number came down so we're going to be adjusting by that and the balance of making us get to this net zero number was done that's where we are right now however we'll be voting on that and we still had open from the last meeting that we need to decide about tonight whether or not on debt service we want to take that from the 6.1 million which we had in in the initial version of the budget up to what we called the 7% which is more like 6.6 6.6 million all excess monies from the board of selectmen and the board of education were they turned over to the general fund uh, they are required to be at year end. They will yeah, be. Uh, yeah. They are. They are automatically required to be. We have the ability um, on the board of ed side to um, to create another non lapsing account. It's special legislation. If they do have a hard spot, we can decide as a board of finance to do that, and that'll be something else we'll be talking at about this time, tonight. That money is going into the general fund. It, by law, it goes into the general fund unless we vote otherwise, and it, there is no thing, nothing we can do otherwise on the Board of Selectmen. There is something we can do on the Board of Ed side, so we'll be talking about that tonight. So those are... You don't anticipate doing that. I don't know. We're going to talk about it. It's on our list. Um, so um, I'm sorry, but I just thought it was fair to at least give an update to the public. Um, we don't normally do it with back and forth questions, but I, I hope everybody's comfortable that they know now we're gonna, what we're going to be talking about tonight. And let me reopen it up to the public for your comments, please. Thank you. I'm Paul Turtle. I, I live at 733 Miller's Way in the Mill Commons. I've come tonight to object to the $100,000 going to the Veterans Memorial that Ms. Coe objected to at the last meeting. Mm -hmm. I am a veteran, I'm 90 years old, and I think this is money ill spent. 
This is supposed to be done by private donations. We have two memorials at the present time to donate to veterans, one down in the, in the uh, Weetog area to the Civil War veterans, and one in front of Eno Hall now to vet donate directed to veterans of all wars. And if the memorial committee were to take their money and enhance that memorial, it would save a lot of trouble and also save you $100,000 that evidently the school board needs now to take care of the playing fields for our students and their safety. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Joan, would you like to? Next. <laughs> Joan Co. 26 Whitcomb Drive. At the last Board of Finance meeting on April, 18th, oh, April 19th, we once again had a telephone hookup, this time with Linda Schofield, who was out of town. Although the Freedom of Information Act allows this for attendance purposes, it does not work on a meeting as important as the Board of Finance with inadequate transmission of presenters and audio from the board itself not transmitted adequately. Linda Schofield's hookup was less than adequate, leaving some of the comments from the presenters and the board inaudible due to poor transmission and loss of phone connection during the meeting. Linda Schofield's phone hookup was necessary to have a quorum. However, the fact that she was not fully informed on the conversation due to inadequate transmission, her participation was less than valuable uh, than a sitting member. I would like to recommend that the Board of Finance eliminate the phone hookups at their meetings. Now that the town has some idea on the revenues from the state, it appears we are at a shortfall of 315463 How is the Board of Finance going to address this issue? Simsbury has the highest mill rate in the surrounding area, leaving Simsbury less competitive with the surrounding areas. There are financial indicators that should alert the Board of Finance that revenues will diminish over the years. The Hartford building will be demolished with the loss of $1.5 million. The building bubble will eventually bust, and due to too much supply with little demand, lowering the costs of the buildings, which will lead to lower assessments, leading to lower tax revenue. Simsbury will receive less revenue from the state, leading to increasing taxes or reducing budgets. Many of the capital expenditures and nonprofit organizations should not receive tax dollars. The golf course should be self-funding, or the town should look into contracting out the golf course to remove the tax burden to Simsbury residents. $125,000 golf course improvements should be eliminated. $240,000 Greenway improvements. Money should be raised by private organizations. Four hundred thousand dollars open space planning and improvements open space should remain open with no costs associated with improvements paying 11 million dollars for the open space at Ethel Walker property should remain in its original state without any additional costs $100,000 for veteran memorials should be funded with private funds. $15,000 for a golf utility cart for the private nonprofit performing arts that should be paid with revenues from the nonprofit group, not taxpayer dollars. $130,000 for the plan of de conservation development should be in the operating budget. 92005 land use studies should be in the operating budget. Many of the maintenance products should be in the operating budget or eliminated. The Board of Education should also place maintenance products in the operating budget. Why are the tennis courts at the high school not a priority item when they are dangerous and unsafe to play on? But the turf field for $660,000 is a priority. How can the Board of Education invite other school tennis teams to play on the unsafe tennis courts at the high school and the junior and the junior high when the liability is so great. The Board of Education is spending $1,950,000 for the renovation of the junior high school before the unsafe fields and tennis courts are renovated. Why should the inside of the school have a higher priority than the safety of the courts and fields on the outside? The fields and tennis courts at the junior high are used year-round by many groups that could increase our liability. Safety should be a priority expenditure. The Board of Finance has to look to the future economic indicators and review these budgets to lower the expenditures so that Simsbury can be competitive in the future. We can no longer use our general fund as a slush fund to pay for projects that should be eliminated from the budget entirely or placed in the operating budgets. 
taxpayers should not pay for private nonprofit groups. These expenditures should be eliminated from the budget. It is the responsibility of the Board of Finance to hold the line on spending and not kick the can down the road. The budget should be thoroughly vetted before they go before the pu public for referendum vote. And all of my comments will be posted on Simsbury Patch, Simsbury Forum Topics, news feed on Facebook and Twitter at Joan Cole, in case you missed anything I had to say. Thank you for listening. Thank you, Mrs. Cole. Yes. Um, can I ask her a question? Or do you want to do that at the end? Mm, yeah. Okay. My name is Leonard Lanza. I have two fire brick lane, Simsbury. I've been a resident for 53 years. For the last four and three quarter years, I have been the chairman of the Simsbury Veterans Memorial Committee. Mr. Turlow, thank you for your service and your comments. I appreciate it. Uh, we've got over 900 veterans in Simsbury, according to the assessors list. We've uh, had, at this point, we're at 535 pavers scheduled to be placed at the memorial. Uh, the memorial is not as private as you'd like it to appear. Uh, please keep in mind that on the day the project is completed, it's turned over to the town. It's probably going to be the most visible public uh, piece of property in the town for a long period of time. We, um, the General Assembly has already given its blessing to the use of public funds by approving a $150,000 steep grant which we got last year through the efforts of Representative Hampton and Senator Whitkos. Uh, the first place we looked, Mr. Turtleout, the first place we looked when we began talking about a project four and three quarter years ago was in front of Eno Memorial Hall. Uh, I talked to the then town engineer who very quickly made it very clear that was totally inappropriate for any further work down there. It's all cables and, and wires underneath that area. So we began to look in other places. Uh, I think we've got the finest site that we could possibly get. Uh, and uh, I'm happy to say that it appears at this point that uh, we might be completely within our own budget and uh, we might not need the gap money. But if we do, I certainly ask you to leave it in there. Thank you. For the public's information, would you mind just saying on the record where, where the location is? Since You're kidding. Well, no, <laughs> the public that's listening to this might not be aware of okay. where the location is. Yeah, it's uh, at the entrance of the library. On the left side of the driveway on Eaglewood uh, as, you, as you pull into the library. Thank you. Any other questions I can answer while I'm here? For anybody? Just can you amplify on your last comment that you might actually not need the 100000 We had a bid opening this morning. And, well, it's, it's not a done deal at this point. We've, it'll be at least a month before uh, a contract is issued. There's, there's a lot of uh, work to do with the town engineer and the architect to go over the bids, make sure we're talking apples and apples all the way through. At that point, we'll have a much firmer number than I could give you now. Okay. And are you continuing to do fundraising as well? No. Uh, we're, we have a letter going out to uh, our approximately 900 veterans on uh, May 31st, uh, which uh, tells them that uh, they'll have until July 1st if they still want to fill out an application for a paver. So that's, that's the cutoff date. So that might produce some additional revenue. It could. Okay. Uh, we're not anticipating an awful lot. You know, in addition to those 535 pavers which we have, uh, we also have uh, in excess of 200 private donations as well. So there's been a tremendous response from the public. Thank you very much. Thank you. Is there anyone else that would like to address us this evening in the public hearing? My name is Mike Rinaldi. Um, I reside at 32 Pinnacle Mountain Road. My comments tonight are, uh, what I can say, are not going to be politically correct. You know, um, I came here not knowing what the budget was really about. I went to the last meeting, and we were something like a million dollars in the rears. And Mr. Palmer, I uh, decided, well, we're going to do 
200 here, 200 here, and 200 here. I'm going, whoa, that doesn't make any sense. Anyways, things have changed, I found out tonight. We're only going to be cut a few hundred thousand dollars, and Barbara decided that um, by hook or by crook and manipulations, there'll be no tax increase, or probably no tax increase, which should make everybody happy. It doesn't make me happy. I've lived in this town for 40-something years, 45 years, supported it, supported the Board of Education, and told people how wonderful a town we have and how great a Board of Education there is and how well our school system operates for all the children in this town. But over the past 12 years, something dramatically has happened. About 25 years ago, I found out the Board of Education is not truly elected. It's appointed. When you go to vote, it says vote for any two and all four get elected. It controls 80% of the tax revenues, and it spends 80% of the tax revenues. <clears throat> the town of Simsbury has the 49th highest mill rate in the state of Connecticut. But more so, it has the 11th highest equalized tax rate in the state of Connecticut. And the state of Connecticut has the highest capita tax rate in the contiguous 48 states plus Alaska. You got a problem. People are moving out. Business ain't staying here. You don't come here unless you can sell something here. How can we change things? We have to cut taxes. We have to cut spending. Who spends the most? Board of Education. Now, we support the Board of Education, but how can you, over the past 13 years, <coughs> decrease enrollment by 25% and not turn one single cent back to the taxpayers? Not one single cent. Every one of their budgets has been higher than the CPI, except for one when we combined the health systems for the Board of Education and the Board of Finance, which is a $500,000 savings. So how, how do we solve this problem? Well, you, you can't increase per pupil costs two to three times the, height, the rate of inflation. This budget calls for a 4.5% increase in per pupil costs. CPI is 1.5. Now, we're going to get a zero mill rate increase. But that doesn't solve our problem. It's going to get worse next year. The Board of Education has to become a part of the problem and a part of the solution. There is no solution there. OK, we, we have a system which has utilized all the savings that could have been turned over to the town over the past 12 years in this decreasing enrollment. And we've, we've, we haven't achieved even a cent of it. Now, Mr. Rinaldi, can we ask you to wrap up? I agree with the no tax increase. But that board has to come under some kind of control because they're going to drive this town out of business. Thank you. Is there anyone else from the public that would like to speak? Yes. Yes, my name is Thomas Frank. I Can we ask you to come up to the microphone? Oh, so. Yes. My name is Thomas Frank. I uh, live at 19 Banbury Drive in West Simsbury. Uh, Connecticut. I, I, I will be very, very brief. I, I, I know that this, this meeting is, is a public meeting, and I believe it is televised, correct? Yes. And there are some statements that have been made in this meeting, uh, in the public comment, that are wildly inaccurate. And I would only suggest to this board that I'm speaking as a private citizen. Um, let me make that clear. Uh, and I would only um, 
suggest to this Board of Finance that some procedure be in place to, given that this is a public meeting and is televised, that some of these wildly inaccurate statements do not go unchallenged. Thank you very much. Thank you. Board of Board, I challenge you to a debate, sir. <laughs> on CPTV. That, that's with not appropriate. That's not appropriate at this meeting, please. Um, is there anyone else from the public that would like to speak this evening? Okay, hearing none, um, I would like to offer to the first selectman, and excuse me, please, we'd like to continue. To the first selectman and to the superintendent, would either of you like to address any of the comments or provide any additional information at this meeting? Thank you to everyone who spoke. We do appreciate the input. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Can I ask a clarifying question? Sure. I, I wanted to ask Mrs. Coe. You, you mentioned, and I know I heard, actually did hear, <laughs> through the phone at the last meeting, some uh, someone else commented on the tennis courts uh, being unsafe. Can you specify what you mean by unsafe? Is yeah. it, it has a crack and people could no. trip, or what? It's not only a crack. What happens is when you have uh, the undersurface that freezes and uh, it can and, and then gets uh, in the warm weather gets yep. uh, expands. Sure. What happens is you have small cracks. These cracks expand yep. and they also tip. So it's a so safety what you about have tipping over something. is a, okay. a a fissure in on the court and it's all the courts throughout every court except court one at the high school which was redone. Uh, the junior high is worse than the high school. And so you have this lip. So if people, and it's moved out. So with this blue stuff that you put in mm -hmm. to take care of it. So if you're, and you play tennis, yep. and you know that the ball hits something that's totally uneven and scooped out, you don't get a true bounce. If you're running for a ball in an uneven court, you, you can, can trip. trip. Okay. And so these are the issues that have to be resolved. And I would suggest that the Board of Finance take a field trip down at both courts and see exactly what I'm talking about. Because uh, the coaches have complained, the uh, people who have kids playing on the team, and also other, other schools have complained about the dangerous situation that's there. My recollection, Barb, if I could, from the last meeting, and I thought Burke addressed that was that this was slated for repair as soon as the weather permitted and that the longer term plan from a capital improvement perspective is that the courts are also slated for replacement at, at the appropriate time but I'm that the repairs well, the repairs would be made next year I'm saying it's no I'm, uh, I Burke, Burke had said the repairs be made as soon as the weather permits this year was my understanding you Burke, Burke can you that is, that is Burke. okay oh, so the repairs have not yet been made at this point it's unsafe thank you thank you um anybody else have anything before we close the public hearing no okay thank you very much um and thank you for everybody for speaking we do appreciate your input um at the public hearing and i'd like to close the public hearing at this point okay next we're going to go into a board of finance meeting i'd like to bring that to order it's a special meeting of the board of finance and we're bringing that to order at 608 for the record, I apologize for being late. There was a terrible traffic jam. I don't know I told why. You. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. We're glad you made it. Um, glad here. <laughs> okay. Um, and we're not going to do the Pledge of Allegiance again because we have taken care of that for this evening. Um, would the finance director like to make some comments on the governor's budget and where we ended up, just so sure. it's clear for everybody? Sure. Good evening, everyone. Um, <clears throat> All right, so a lot has changed uh, from the last time we met. Um, you'll recall, um, last time we met, the governor had released a second budget uh, in response to the legislature's um, initial cuts, which he didn't believe went far enough to balance the budget. Um, at the time, the impact of that was on Simsbury would be about $1.1 million over, or I guess under, um, in terms of revenue from what we were budgeting. Um, as it worked its way through to the compromise budget between the legislature and governor, which was just passed um, by both houses this past Thursday and Friday, so uh, the timing actually did work out pretty well for us here. Um, the final net impact to us um, 
is three hundred fifteen thousand uh, dollars, as was referenced earlier uh, tonight. Um, you know, one significant change from before is the mill rate cap on cars has been changed from thirty-two mills to thirty-seven mills. Um, obviously, that feeds into our mill rate calculation. Um, and otherwise, uh, but on the whole, it was not nearly as bad as certainly the governor's second budget made it look. Um, and uh, so if you have any more questions about that, I can certainly answer them. But that's sort of the high level of what happened. The 32 to 37, that's just for a one-year reprieve at this point? That is correct. Um, it is <clears throat> The legislation has been changed now. You'll recall before the following year was going to be capped at 29 uh, and change. Um, that now will be 32 mills, according to the recent amended legislation. Um, we did just get uh, more guidance today, uh, really just a few hours ago, that it looks like for fisc that would be in fiscal 18, obviously, the following year, um, that the plan is going to be to uh, reimburse um, towns for that difference in the mill rate cut. Um, but I won't hold my breath, but we'll uh, see how it goes. So hold my breath just uh, that is at least the intention of the legislation as it is stands right now. <clears throat> Anything else on the governor's budget? No. That's really all I have. There. Okay. Do you want me to go through anything else? Uh, that's good. Anybody have any questions? Okay. Um, so what we did then was um, a lot of work with um, cooperative work from both the Board of Ed and the Board of Selectmen, and I'd like to say thank you to both of them, the superintendent and the first selectman, for um, working with us. As you recall at the last meeting, we actually asked for <coughs> them to come up with 200 in the operating side, 200 on the capital side, and we thought we would use reserves for the other 200. We just made up the number 600 um, because we couldn't believe the cut would be as high as a million, which was what was being threatened at the time. Um, but it turns out it's down under, it's down closer to 300. So we actually did receive um, for the operating budget side um, a cut, um, two cuts out of the Board of Selectmen budget. Um, 12,000 um, due to the cut from the body cameras and 4,000 which is a cut in audit services we now have a proposal from the auditors and we actually have that exact number so we were able to cut 4,000 out of that and the Board of Ed updated their budget and reduced it by um, 43,000 which is due to um, a reduction in OPEB and they also reduced it um, or they also found the 20,000 because um, there was a town position that hadn't been fully funded on the town side because they had asked Board of Ed for a contribution that wasn't in the initial budget and now that's in there. So so net net um, essentially it was 63,000 that um, Board of Ed has found. Then the additional um, the additional money where we got the difference was that um, there's a new system that was set up last year where the Board of Finance can approve the residual unused budget balance for Board of Ed only, or it cannot do this for Board of Selectmen, but for Board of Ed, we can approve that that go into what's called a non-lapsing fund. And the way we set that up and approve the process in Simsbury, we required that the Board of uh, finance approve the actual use of the non-lapsing funds so when we put it in there we specify what it can be used for and uh, this past year they've made very good use um, to use it for cost reduction projects to save some money um, but um, the other piece that we had approved it for was special education needs transportation needs because um, those are very volatile and you never know from day to day um, what's going to happen in the special ed area so those were the two areas we approved the use of they have informed us after looking at it following the last meeting that at this point they're projecting a 246,000 hard spot is that right we currently have in the in the non-lapsing account uh, 249,000 49. that uh, we would not need to uh, use in this in this current year. So that would be available if you continue that into the next year. And ju and just for those of you who don't speak Barbara's accounting ease, a hard spot is a favorable a good thing a good thing <laughs> <laughs> like a savings. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, thank you. Just teasing. <laughs> yeah, sorry. I grew up in the budget world. Um, yeah, a hard spot's a good thing. It means we're favorable. 
um, so if they end the year favorable, which means they spend less on their budget, then we're allowed to set up this non-lapsing account. And we've made it very restrictive in Simsbury to limit what they can use it for and to require that we approve what they use it for. And we've only given them one year to spend it. So they have to come back to us so that they couldn't just put money away and hold it as sort of their own reserve process. We said, okay, you can have it for a year and this is what you need to do. So we asked them as we started looking for this, is there going to be anything left at year end? And very responsibly, um, they didn't just go spend it. They um, are returning back to the town the portion that was not needed for this uh, fiscal year. So using that 246, we're basically able on the operating side to bring us to a flat, no increased budget. Um, in addition to that, we had asked for a capital <coughs> reduction, and the Board of Selectmen also found us a capital reduction. Um, Let's see, in the amount of 400, is it exactly 400? In the amount of approximately $400,000, um, which um, they are, which project are they reducing? They're reducing the town facilities now. The town, right, and they're delaying that to a future year in order to reduce the capital requirements for next year. So we appreciate that cut because that makes affordability for the long term better. Um, and then um, the other piece that we have talked about that we'd like to make a motion on this evening also is that um, we are now currently projecting for year end slightly favorable on the town side, but again, that automatically goes to um, the general fund reserve and on the board of ed side it's looking like they might have slight favorability um, the estimate might be as much as a hundred thousand at this point at year end and um, the conversation that we'd like to talk about tonight is whether or not we'd like to commit to allowing that to be put aside again in a non-lapsing account used only for the special ed purposes should there be a student that requires um, additional funding and again it would be for a one-year term and if it's not used for that said purpose it would then fund back roll back again into the general fund for the following year that's our current plan it would be up to us to vote at the end of the year if there's money left what to do with it um, just like it's up, up to us now to vote on the residual balance that will be there at your end on the money from last year um, so just, to, just to clarify, for the, the non-lapsing barb is mm -hmm. for board of ed only and then yeah. any money is left in the town side would be moved into the general automatically fund. right good right so um what we'd like to do tonight is approve the projects um and the other part of the conversation that we've had is um how as a board can we responsibly um meet the capital requirements and so we did some capital projections and obviously next year's capital requirements are heavy and will need to be trimmed because it's not going to be um, affordable within our 7% um, requirement that we'd like to see. But having said that, um, the more that we actually pay cash for and don't go borrow and bond, the better off we are in the long run as a town because we're paying less back on the project. We're essentially paying cash as we go, um, which is always a good idea. So um, what we need to do this year, there's two pieces of this. Um, we have the ability to use up to 1%, um, and that's assuming that reserve levels are adequate to be able to do this, but we can use under the charter up to 1% on capital projects um, for this year, and we have already as a board approved two <coughs> projects to come against that. One was a heart and hypertension payment um, that's required to be made, and the second one was um, the Cushman UT UTV has already been approved to come out of the 1% excess. We're being asked tonight, um, because of the timing of the delay and the fact that we move this by a month when we're going to approve the budgets and when the um, voters will actually be able to vote on the budget, um, it turns out that the turf field project at the high school needed commitments and a contract in advance of the timing of the voters being able to vote on the budget. So because of that, we've been asked to take that also out of the 1% excess and move it out of next year. So we'll be reducing next year's capital requirements by this and moving it up and paying it out of the 1% this year, which is paying cash for it. So it would be doing it in the time that they can get it done in time for next year and paying cash for it. That item is 660000 um, we've identified uh, other projects that would get us up to 
the um, using the one percent but we don't want to act on any of that tonight as a board and that's just because we want to wait till year end and make sure that we're doing the right thing and we're not using money in advance to in case something else could happen that is unforeseen at this point in time which hopefully won't happen so as a board I'd like to ask for a motion if people are comfortable to approve the turf project coming out of this year's 1% excess so that they can get started and get it in, done in time for yep, so moved a second any questions or discussion all those in favor aye, aye. okay um, and the next piece um, that we'd like to talk about is we've now done a walk forward and this is something new where we're looking at reserve levels over multiple years so um, we know what's going to happen this year we've got some excess revenue coming in from building permits um, we have favorable on the tax collection rate so we've got some money coming into the reserve level and we look at where we think we're going to be at year end and then the project that we just approved would be coming out of our general reserve so we take that out and we look at where we're going to be at year end we're currently projecting this year end to finish at 12.6 million dollars in general reserves which is up from last year at 12.9 percent up to 13.7 percent so we are building up our reserves this year um, as just as a result of favorable activity in the town um, we looked at what we're thinking about next year and one of the conversations that I'd like the board to have is a discussion around moving from the six point what was it three percent two percent that we're at 6.5% um, 6.1 million 6.55% okay 6.5% very close yeah um, <laughs> that we're currently at 6.5% of the budget the total expenditure budget um, for capital. for capital and debt service and we had a conversation at the last meeting because of the demand coming ahead should we think about moving that up to 7 um, looking at the reserve position we're in right now it would be possible for one year to actually take that out of the reserve level and still leave us with a comfortable position at the following year end and we have a walk forward for three years in front of the board here um, to show that we would be able to afford doing that if we'd like to do it out of reserves so I'd like to raise that as a topic for discussion do people have thoughts on that yes <laughs> So, so the the reserve policy, if I recall, we were ten to twelve percent, mm -hmm. and so we're looking at thirteen point seven. And if I recall, the revenue on the Hartford will continue through next year because it was on our tax roll. So we're not looking at that impact until the following year. Correct. Okay, I I think uh, it makes perfect sense. Yeah. And now the downside is next year the downside of using reserves like we're talking about is that next year if we want to hold the spending flat and we want to keep that at seven percent then it would require us finding more reserves that are available and again we're going to be holding those reserves to cover the Hartford loss of, of revenues so yeah. either we do that or it would require a tax increase or cutting how much we're spending in the in that account mm -hmm. on the following year mm -hmm. which of course is an option too for us to consider mm -hmm. anyone else have any thoughts on that I, I'm I'm comfortable with it okay okay um, can we get a motion to um, to use to approve um, taking that out of reserves was it it was 600 well it's not the it's the 423 423 right there is that there we go it's on of the yep. handout it's on the second, yep. page. On the second page right. okay so I move that we take four hundred twenty three thousand dollars out of reserves to pay for capital costs up to the seven percent cap for fiscal year 17. Okay, is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Just Aye. discussion. Mm -hmm. So oh, rather oh, than, sorry. that's all right, rather than increase it to, to 7%, we have the ability to reduce spending as well. Is that correct? Well, we're proposing to increase it to 7% basically this year using cash. Correct, okay. But we always would have an ability to cut to capital projects to scale too. it back. And in fact, we are cutting them by the 400 
thousand dollar project that the board of selectmen has reduced the capital list from for this year right okay and keep in mind we only uh approve one year of capital at a time so although you have that five-year plan we're not improving the out years that that will come one year at a time correct so okay. you'll, you'll have that opportunity later <laughs> this this will achieve i think the objective barbara you had set forth last meeting i think correct mm -hmm. in terms of smoothing the capital project mm -hmm. spending so that we yeah. don't have spikes so like that any out years yeah yep so we have a motion and a second on the table is there any further discussion all those in favor aye aye, aye. It passes any opposed no and the walk forward just so the public can see what we're looking at basically shows um, that we would still maintain a, a rate of 12 percent based on variables that we can uh, predict and again we're out three years so it's tough to really understand what's going to happen in those three years but we would even be able to cover the cut from 37 to 32 should that happen and not be funded by the state so our we could still do that and stay at the 12 percent that we'd like to stay at um, next year and that's why when we're looking at this we feel comfortable that you know if we build up reserves too high we're overtaxing the public by you know excess reserves so this makes us understand that we've got reserves set up to cover the Hartford and maybe some other event but essentially we'll be bringing our reserves back down to that 12 percent level which is really our target to stay at okay um, before you go too far on mm -hmm. can we go back and talk about a couple other things that are in these Lines sure. here. Of course. I just had questions. Um, this is a, a, a list of the things that we will talk about and then I guess the next meeting, but um, for the one percent that we can spend. Of this year's. Of this year's. Right. Um, and uh, one of the items is the Board of Ed CNR cash payment for fiscal year 17 and then it's not legible. So what, what is what are those things? So we really do have to do those actually we really have to do both of those because we had them take them out of their budget and their right. budgets were reduced by so that. this is all of their CNR stuff yeah okay all right. um, the planning studies that 25,000 yeah. which one was that? your budget reduced by the um, the assuming that we fund your CNR the the item regarding the uh, 115 divided by right the, yeah right so so their budget's been reduced by that so we really probably should do a motion tonight because assuming that we're doing the budgets right right we've we assumed that's a good point linda we didn't talk about that um, and the planning studies are our board of ed planning studies or are they board of selectmen they were board of selectmen is that budget been reduced the planning studies were carried over into this year um that were not uh, uh I believe an accounting error as it was described before. Yeah. But they, okay. For the um, twenty-five thousand, just the twenty-five is a correction. There was a. So we kind of don't have a choice on we that. We don't one have either. a choice on that. That was what Joe came to you before and said <coughs> there was an error there. Right. And the knee ask one, I know we wanted to pay for this year as a way to reduce it out of next right. year's budget. And too. we did take the budget down, right, for the yes. NEAC one, too. So okay. I'm wondering if maybe we need to do these. We need to do those two, I would say, because the budgets have been reduced, but we don't necessarily need to do the third. And let me tell you why I would say that. Um, we don't know where the Board of Selectmen is going to end at year end. And assuming that they've got some favorability, they can actually do, um, we have, they have to come to things. us for permission to transfer between line items, but they can present to us the ability to use it out of yeah. this year's operating okay. budget, um, assuming there will be a hard spot of that 25000 which I'm hoping, um, I'm hoping we come out that way. So we may not even need to take it out of reserves. It may be able to come right out of this year's budget. That is possible. The other thing I want to point out, though, is the, the charter section that provides for the 1%. These have to be recommended by the Board of Selectmen first. So another reason to wait until the June meeting is if you guys could provide guidance that this is your intention tonight, the Board of Selectmen can then take their action. This is just the way the charter is set up. Uh, because thank you. only those first three items have already been recommended by the Board of okay. Selectmen. Okay. Mm -hmm. They, did not recommend they didn't recommend the two board It's sort of a card and a horse issue. We need to right. find out what your final budget is, and then right. they can take responsibility. It's a complicated dance. <laughs> <laughs> so Kevin's saying his memory is that we already approved the planning studies. Really? When Joe brought it forward. And I thought it was at the um, Henry James, but it could be incorrect. So can we check? Can we just check back minutes to make sure? Because at least one person remembers we might have already approved that. 
so we should check it. And we would like to ask the Board of Selectmen then for a motion so we can officially make sure that the Board of Ed budget is whole for next. And, and then I had a question about the, um, in the Board of Selectmen uh, capital needs, the light poles. I know they wanted to save money in the long-term operating budget by purchasing the light poles and changing the light fixtures. Um, where are we on, on that, Lisa? Well, the delay in the referendum, at the time we did this, we thought our deadline for securing the estimate we had was actually May 10th. Yeah. So I could have signed a contract. It was our understanding at the time that we could have signed a contract in the 10th and been guaranteed that to make the payment July first. We're getting strange things so from everyone. it's not been resolved yet. It has not been resolved. Where we are with that is that they have not agreed to guarantee the price at this point for other communities where they have not uh, agreed to guarantee it. They have increased the cost. We are recommending to you um, tonight as part of your motion because of that that you increase the line item on the capital budget for the purchase of the street lights to 865 to accommodate that, but we don't even know if that's the right number. What was the number before? 775. It's on page two of this memo, oh, right okay. in the first paragraph. Okay. The 865 <laughs> would provide a guarantee. That's a big issue. So we do That's not have the final numbers from them. You know, our council has been talking with Eversource Council. Mr. Roy has been working with ESCO and uh, with Eversource to try and get a number, but they have not given the number. We've reached out to Kevin Whitgos. Uh, so everyone is working on it, but it is a complicated procedure because of the way they do the estimates through Pure, it actually does not coincide with the budgeting process of municipalities. So it is a little bit um, tricky. So we are still making, you know, with the reduction of the 400000 that we did for the municipal planning, uh, building planning, that's four hundred out. So we're asking you to put back in that extra 95000 so, yeah. so with an extra $90,000 cost, does it still come out to be a savings then? Well, it, it's still an 85000 a year savings because we're transferring okay. the money per year, but the return on investment is a little bit more extended because you've increased... Right. Um, the cost. Am I explaining that? So it takes 10 years to pay it back. What is the what is um, the cost from Eversource that making them? What cost are they incurring that they're passing on to us? They, they, I don't think they guarantee it. Question of the day, and that's the and we have. I mean, that's been asked. We are asking that. We've got council asking that. We anticipate going to Pure if the numbers come in unreasonable, because we don't understand that. Why, if they're depreciating the value, the cost would go up. We've right. heard historically that other communities who have missed who've had, in this situation have experienced increases even when there's been no substantial change to the... Uh, that's what I... Yeah, that's the problem. Is that it, nothing has been added, nothing, and if anything, uh, the lights have depreciated, you would expect the number to go down, but we are being warned very strongly by the, uh, by the consultant who's working with Tom that, that in other cases it's gone up. But we are... So can I give you a contact to sure. ask the question about? Can you what? Can I give you uh, some numbers? Uh, can we, can, I, I'd like to find out why. Yeah. Not be held hostage. Um, <laughs> since the head of Pura happens to live here in this town. Yeah. Well. <laughs> yeah. Should we have definitely contact? So, so we can do that outside of this meeting, but yes. I, I, the Board of Selectmen hasn't agreed to spend the additional money, but it is a, it's a savings project. And so we're, the net, the net change in capital will allow them to pay the new estimated cost, if we can negotiate keeping it right, if we can negotiate keeping it where it is, then we won't spend it. It's right. not money that would get spent. But it is incorporated into our budget. That 85000 is incorporated into our budget. Into the so, capital. So it, the no, savings. it's into our operating. We reduced our electricity oh. cost. So it okay. is. The savings you're talking about. Oh, okay. Yeah, the, so the savings, if we don't do the streetlights, that will be negatively impactful right. on the operating budget. Okay. Okay. Linda, did, those were good questions. Did you have any more? Nope. Okay. So in order to make this happen, the next step we would need is to go through a... Does anyone have any questions on anything we've talked about? Is everything clear on what's in front of us and what we're doing at this point? So the next thing we need is a series of motions um, so that we can actually move this to the public for a vote. Uh, I'm sorry. I, I actually do have one other question. Okay. <laughs> it's no for, problem. And apropos of nothing, I noticed that one of the cuts in the um, 
in the state money is in non-public transportation and it's just an area I've never really understood how it works um, and and how, what the law requires from the state I mean if they want towns to pay private schools for their transportation and I think it's also their health care right the, the nurses, nurse, yeah. right. but they cut the money. Are we required to make up the difference, or is there? I mean, if we're always expecting you guys to look hard at your budget, mm -hmm. do we also have the ability to look hard at their budget? Because, or are we required to give the we are, non we are, schools? We are required to do the service. So, so the the do we um, pay them? Page, so or the front page of your handout we showed that. For non-public school transportation, um, there was nine thousand eight hundred eighty-four dollars. For public school, it was forty-two nine nine fifteen. So we see that the final state budget zeroed that out. Yep. So those revenues go directly to the town, and those are in the 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 um, non both in the in the in the non-public uh, budget revenue detail as well as in the public pink pages as we as we call it. So that has nothing to do with the fact that we have a non-public school budget. And we have to pay for that anyhow. We have to pay for that service out of the legislative. So, do we pay the schools to, to hire their own buses, or we no, just pay we are, buses to transport are, their are, kids? We are providing either reimbursement in some cases, or we're, or we're providing the direct transportation. And we never have the option to look at other ways of doing their transportation or their nursing to save money. We're constantly looking at. What is the you know what is the most effective way for us to to fulfill our obligation? There's a maximum per student amount that we have to that we have to pay. So it doesn't um, it doesn't go beyond that that amount. But the fact that this this revenue source to the town was cut has nothing to do with yeah. the non-public school budget where we're paying for these right. things out of. It, okay. The two just are not linked the way yeah. people might think. Strange thing. <laughs> the money comes it comes into the town. Goes to the town general fund. Right. It also doesn't balance on. right where the money goes. Right. So it and comes out not, of their budget, but the town gets the money in general the, fund. To the board of ed. It's just right. they're two really two separate things. Thank you. All right. Thank you for that. Okay. I'm done. Okay. So are we ready to do some motions to get things? Sure. Okay. Um. Can I ask, we have a copy of the motions in front of us, and we also have them available for the public. Um, where are my capital motions? Hmm. So, um, oh, here they are. In order. Okay, so <laughs> let's do the operating budget motions first. And if I can ask you to turn to page uh, two of the motions, we really need um, to make a motion for, and if I have you look at the sheet, there will be three motions. The first one is regarding the Board of Selectmen budget in 1990 mm -hmm. and that budget is adjusted for the changes that we've talked about today. Um, then we have a motion for um, Board of Ed, 67454. And then we have a motion which um, is for 13279 and that is the third motion. And that is how the voters will vote on it. And that's everything else together gets grouped. And when that third motion gets read into the record, what I'd like people to do is just break out because it includes six items. And if you turn back to page one now, that last motion, six items include, you can see, the 541, the 6.5 million, the 1.1 million. So th those six items, we just want to say what they are because they're included in that 13.279. Okay. Mm -hmm. People follow that? Mm -hmm. Okay. So can I ask for the first motion? I'll make the first motion. Okay. Uh, to approve the 2016-2017 Board of Selectmen operating budget in the amount of 19490444 reflecting a decrease of $16,000 from the budget as presented at the public hearing. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. And just for clarity, can I ask that you actually read the motion on the next one? Who would like to make the second motion? Okay. Sure. Oh, um, a move to approve the 2016-2017 Board of Education operating budget in the amount of $67,454,569, reflecting a decrease of $289,000 from the budget as presented 
at public hearing. She's reading the first page. It says I'll second, second that. That's fine. Oh, it's that's fine. They both do the same thing. Okay. I'll second that. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. That one passes. Okay, and the third one. I'd like to read this that. Read it right here, right? I'd like to, yeah, yeah, because then you don't have to read six separate motions. Right. Be resolved that the appropriation recommended and approved by the Board of Finance for the purposes of paying the expenses of the sewer use fund. Did you want me to say the amounts from the first page? Yes, please. The sewer use fund. Okay, which one is that? Oh, right here. Uh, Three million uh, forty-one thousand two hundred and fifty-five. The residential rental properties. Uh, Forty-two thousand sixty. The Simsbury Farms special programs. It's on the same top. page. Not the yeah, next page. Oh. <laughs> uh, one million nine hundred thirty-one thousand three hundred sixty-five. The non-public schools. Which one is that? Five hundred forty-one. Um, Five hundred forty-one thousand two hundred thirty-seven. Uh, debt retirement, capital, and capital non-recurring annual budgets for the fiscal year ending June 30th, which uh, is 6589819 That's shall, debt retirement, and then that capital non-recurring is? Oh, yeah, uh, and capital non-recurring is 1134004 Um So all in shall be approved and implemented in the amount of thirteen million two hundred and seventy nine thousand seven hundred and forty. Second. That was a mouthful. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. If I could just ask, you know, about town clerk, who's retiring by the way? Uh, very happy to just also make a motion to read into the record the questions for referring about. Uh, you can start with in accordance with sections 406 of the charter if you'd like, but if you actually could just read those three questions, that would go for it, Jeff. Okay. Great. So bottom uh, of page two. So I am moving that you can say moving in accordance with sections four oh six. Okay, so in accordance with uh, Section 406, uh, automatic referendum, and 808, which are duties of the Board of Finance on the budget of the Charter, the recommended operating budgets will be submitted to a referendum in the following forms. One, so the appropriation recommended and approved by the Board of Finance for the purposes of paying the expenses of the Board of Selectmen annual budget for the fiscal year ending June 30, 2017 be approved and implemented in the amount of nineteen million four hundred ninety thousand dollars four hundred ninety four hundred forty four dollars. Did I get that? Four hundred mm -hmm. nineteen million four hundred ninety thousand four hundred forty four dollars. Thank you. Uh, so the appropriation recommended and approved by the Board of Finance for the purposes of paying the expense of the Board of Education annual budget for the fiscal year ending June 30th, 2017, be approved and implemented in the amount of $67,454,569. So the appropriation recommended and approved by the Board of Finance for the purposes of paying the expenses of sewer use fund, sewer treatment plant, residential rental properties, Simsbury Farms, special programs, non-public schools, debt retirement, capital and capital non-recurring annual budgets for the fiscal year ending June 30th, 2017, be approved and implemented in the amount of $13,279,740. Is I second it. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Now we need to do the capital side also. And um, with the motion we had earlier to approve going up to the 7% level, um, that means we will be paying cash. And you have it on the first spreadsheet we had what the cash was going to be paid for. Um, it's a total of, um, he broke it into two pieces in case that wasn't approved. But essentially for next year's, it's the 529253 was the amount that was already in the budget that would allow us to pay cash and then the additional 423 is the second portion so we have carved those projects out and we're not going to have bond council approve bond language the board actually did do that last year and i don't want to approve bond language to let us borrow it if we are approving it to, to pay, pay cash, cash then we right. ought to pay cash and not let any yep. wiggle room in there later for someone to just say yeah but I have bond language approved so now I can go out and bond it so this way we guarantee that cash gets spent uh, point where if I could just direct your attention to a couple parts of this um, first of all 
and I know we've discussed them, but again, just to kind of formally put them on the capital plan. Um, at the bottom of your other motions, I had some, some notes there that I want to make sure we've added that energy efficiency buyout we talked about, $92,753, back onto the capital plan, like referenced in the memo. Um, and then also moving out. Can you say that again, Sean? I didn't follow what you said. There is, there was an item that you would plan, you would discuss paying out of the 1% of this year that we no longer fit in the 1%. Right, the, the lighting. Page. The, yes. the best uh, mechanism to go ahead yes. and pay for that is to put it back, put it onto the capital improvement plan and designate it as cash. That's why it's the first cash. Oh, on okay. Line. Yes, yes, sir. And I get it. Yes, I, did, I just didn't hear you. Sure, sorry. Yeah, I probably was talking too fast, too. The, um, a couple of the others just to clean up, and you can make this as one motion if you want. But that town facilities master plan of 400000 again, because the budget is in your hands now, if, if you made a motion to move that off of fiscal 17, that would clarify what's being moved forward in the capital plan. In addition, obviously, the Simsbury High School turf field project comes off. Um, you've basically done that with the other motion, but you could just do this all together. And the streetlight purchase, as uh, Lisa was mentioning, needs to be increased by $90,000. That All of those are reflected in this final motion here, but if you sort of do that first, then move all of this. The, the last piece is on the very last page, nine. Just you will all, those of you that have done this before will recognize um, the, the pages two through eight are all of the bond language for the ones that are not to be paid with cash, the way Barb was just describing it. The very last one after these stars here is just your recommendations of how the bonds will be issued. And this is your chance to change that should you wish to, but this is just so you know what you're reading, uh, what, what you are approving. Uh, is the terms not to exceed 10 years, maximum term of anybody to be refunded, um, issued to refund any bond anticipation notes, all that, that's the standard language we, we include at the end. Um, with all that being said, you can, as the very first motion here says, once we get to the Capitol, waive the reading of the full text of these nine pages, which I would highly recommend, um, having copies available here, and we have extra copies, and we can print extra copies if anyone else right. would like. So if there's anyone in the audience that would like to see, because we're not going to read it into the record, they're available for you, and we want to make sure that everybody here has access to them, that really is required for us to waive the reading of the detail, because we want to make sure we're not doing anything that's not crystal clear. So um, do you want a motion for these four? Yeah, so, so it's really... You said by three broken out, right? Four, right? Because it's four, take out, right? You take out it's really the first four, and then my last motion here is just a note that I don't want it to be overlooked that we do still need to approve the projects we're going to pay for cash. It, that is part of your global motion, so you're okay there, just right. as long as everyone agrees that all of these items are approved in the total amount of capital projects is that 10.6. Right? The 92 was already in CIP last time, though, right? Not as it was presented to you. Ed. Okay. Okay. There's a there's a similar number, 925 for the plan. That's right. That's right. We talked about this. Okay. So so to make it clear, we're increasing the CIP by 92, and by um, 90. The street lights. And we're decreasing the CIP by 400. Thousand and by six hundred and seventy-five thousand, so we're decreasing it a total of one million oh seventy-five, and we're increasing it by a hundred and eighty thousand. So the net of those two is the actual change that are the new numbers that we're about to do mm -hmm. the motions for. Um, so but just so we need a motion for those four things. Yes, please. Okay. So I move that we add energy efficiency financing buyout to the CIP in the amount of ninety-two thousand seven hundred and fifty-three. Dollars remove CIP item number 27, town facilities master plan from fiscal year 17 in the amount of $400,000. Remove CIP item number 51, Simsbury High School turf field project from CIP plan in the amount of $675,000, reflecting the earlier motion we made uh, to fund that. And then increase the CIP item number 14, street lighting purchase by 90,000 to a total of 865,000. A second. Second. Although any discussion? Just one thing. So the fourth one, the street lighting purchase, that's the increase. Yeah. Okay. But maybe we may not have to. Correct. 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 We hope we won't have to. Right. Okay. There's a second. Any other discussion? Everybody in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, thank you. So by doing that, we saved reading all this. <laughs> thank God. Um, <laughs> it's nine pages long, everywhere. Um, so essentially, 
what you would like um, is just to read the resolved paragraph. Okay, can I have someone make sure. the resolved motion? The first wave, do we have to move to waive the reading? Or? Uh, where it says, upon motion duly made and adopted. Oh, I'm sorry, okay. Okay, okay upon motion duly made, seconded and, and adopted, the reading into the minutes of the full text of the resolutions set out below is waived. Copies of the resolutions having been made available to those in attendance and is recorded in these records immediately preceding these minutes. Second that. Okay, and do we need to separately make the one that we want to pay cash for, or does that include that one too? Um, I just want it before we. Before you vote on that one, yeah. that's what you're saying? Um, I mean, if you want to identify, you, you can identify those cash out problems, or you can set, I mean, because this whole thing is going to be pasted into the record, uh, the total capital improvement plan projects is the $10,693,000. Probably overkill, but if you just read into the record the projects you're going to pay cash with, that would be great because they are not, they're just here in the summary, they're not in the rest of it. Exactly, they're not in the motion, that's, that's right. why I'm questioning it. Okay, so now we have a motion first related to waiving the minutes for everything that requires bonding. Waiving the reading. Reading of, um, thank you. Ra ra waiving the reading of the motion for everything requiring bonding. That's and Jeff, did I modify your motion? Do you want to add that? I think I made the motion. In. Oh, you made it was your motion. Okay. So you want me to add what? That that it's <laughs> all the uh, it's waiving of everything relating to bonding. Right. Correct. Okay. No, and is there a second of second the, the amendment? amended motion? Okay. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. And where is the motion to pay cash? Well, it would just be. I was talking about with Bob Kessel earlier today. She said you can just make a motion to approve the following projects in the following amounts uh, as part of the capital plan, but to be funded through cash, not money. Okay, so um, I think we should do that so it's absolutely clear. And the, the cash ones are on page two? Correct. So and now, now that you've done the 423000 increase to the, to the uh, debt retirement line, you can do all of those in that first section there. That total 529. Don't so there's nine. That. You can just read the following three after that. Okay. So can I get a motion to approve those nine projects to be paid out of cash? Sure. Uh, I move. Do you, and you want them read, right? Yes, please. Okay. I move that we pay for the following projects uh, with cash energy efficiency financing buyout, $92,753. Dollars park improvements thirty thousand athletic field improvements thirty thousand window replacement forty four thousand land use studies ninety two thousand five hundred greenway improvements two hundred and forty thousand for a total of five hundred and twenty nine thousand two hundred and fifty three dollars and the next three and dam evaluations and repairs in the amount of one hundred and forty five thousand dollars Simsbury Farms golf course improvements in the amount of one hundred and twenty five thousand dollars and plan of conservation and development in the amount of one hundred and thirty thousand dollars for a total of four hundred thousand dollars bringing the total proposed capital no uh, no that's, uh, that's, that's gotcha okay <laughs> okay is there a second second, second. any discussion all those in favor? Aye. 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 Good. And as I understand it, that's all the motions that we need to do tonight. You're good? Uh, on the budget, correct. You, you want a motion for the audit? No, you're good. Okay. Um, so that we're done with operating and capital budgets, and we've now voted to move them on so that the voters will have their say and be able to tell us what they think about the proposals that we've developed. Um, and that, yeah, thank you. And the net net to everyone is we voted to do this to have a third year in a row in Simsbury with no increase. You know, we're still not as competitive as we'd like to be with neighboring communities on our mill rate. That's a fact. But we've now held it flat. This will be the third year. Um, and it's helping us get a more competitive mill rate because if you take a look at some of the neighboring towns, most of them have had increases over the last three years. So while we're not where we want to be, it's helping us edge back a bit towards getting more competitive, which is the goal of Board of Finance. Right. Um, more you had a question on the date. Um, so the referendum date is now set for? 
It will be set, has to be formally set by the Board of Selectmen. Uh, but based on this schedule, uh, I will file the budget as approved with the town clerk this Friday. Uh, that will trigger the 14 to 21 day window during which the referendum has to be. Um, I anticipate the Board of Selectmen approving that for Tuesday, June 7th, which is traditional election day. That falls 14 to 21 days away, probably the final. And for this board's information, we meet immediately following the vote and we get the results of the vote and we usually immediately set the budget at that point in time it's at the mill rate at that point in time so plan on making yourselves available the evening of june 7th we usually start the meeting and can we set that for yeah a little earlier than usual because i think last year we set it for like right. eight 30 or right. 845 and we had the information the, by 815 right oh okay. yeah, yeah we had so let's set it for 815 this year um so that as soon as that date is available we'll be able to meet and appropriately set the mill rate for the following year okay okay can we just make a comment um it, uh since we're sort of wrapping up budget stuff and i know you've already said this but i just want to echo what barbara said at the beginning of the meeting and that is that we really appreciate how hard the other boards worked and how collaborative they were. It, it, it was really a, an altogether different year this year, a harder year than last year. But last year was more contentious. If you remember at the end of the year, I sort of, you know, lit myself on fire a little here. <laughs> <laughs> begging and pleading one. for a better better working relationship and I'm really pleased that um, that that mm -hmm. came to fruition I, I, I can't thank you enough for how collaborative what team team players you were in this process and I think particular kudos to the Board of Ed uh, and Matt and and Burke for you know anteing up um, at, at the end here I know that was a difficult process and uh, and we really really appreciate it and I, I, I hope all the voters appreciate it as well I just want to add, I really appreciate the transparency when, you know, I took a look at the volume of information that, you know, that we received, and uh, and it's all right there. It's there. It's a public record as well. And so uh, when we hear comments from the public, uh, it's, you know, it, it's always wonderful to hear. Um, I would love to hear comments, uh, not to invite, you know, anything for this evening because public audience is closed, but just for the future public audiences. Um, you know, maybe some greater specifics would be very helpful to us because, uh, you know, and, and there are opportunities obviously before the Board of Education, the Board of Selectmen as well, but all the information is in here. So if, uh, you know, we heard about wanting to improve the tennis courts, for example, but uh, the information's there for the public to come forward and say, well, you know, we as members of the public do or do not agree with programming along these lines that would be useful not that we necessarily are going to be second-guessing the judgment of the other boards but uh, you know the specificity would be useful you know I, I we've heard the comments before about you know schoolberry and about uh, declining enrollment but again all the data inform and information is in here and so we have reviewed that and I don't want the members of the public to think that uh, that, that we've ignored that, but there are a number of factors and complexities that go into the ultimate decision-making mm -hmm. process, uh, and it's not as straightforward sometimes as just certain statistics pulled out, um, you know, may, may, uh, may mean, to, I mean, mm -hmm. the public may hear, we've had this decline in enrollment, but what the public may not hear if they're only watching a certain evening's uh, meeting is that that enrollment decline uh, is spread out uh, across a bunch of years of schooling and a bunch of different schools and it doesn't translate into okay we had a decline of you know 30 students at Tariffville school in grade three therefore we can eliminate a school teacher position it translates to two here and three here and five there and so again um, you want to maintain the quality integrity of the programs. I, I just I appreciate that transparency, and I I really do believe that uh, even with no tax increases, we have been able to maintain collectively mm -hmm. through it's teamwork a uh, very high quality of life and standard of living in Simsbury. And uh, and again, I will match our town to any town uh, neighboring us. Is there anyone else who'd like to make a comment before we close the budget? I would just like to again make a formal request to the Board of Selectmen and the Board of Ed. I know we, the superintendent isn't here now to hear this, but Brooke, can you please make sure we share for next year's capital? We've previously asked two things, and I just want to reiterate them. 
um, we know it doesn't fit um, and so we'd like to start working early we'd like to meet with you no later than December to have preliminary discussions they are not going to be your final numbers and I understand that we don't expect you to have final numbers in December but we'd really like to have a good feel for what people think they need and we'll have um, a, some affordability conversations around what we think um, is the most we can afford over this next 10 year period to stay within our 7% um, and what that means we also asked um, Linda had requested this and I, I think it's a very good idea that with capital projects coming forward we want to make sure that the operating impact is identified as part of the budget process and that the one project we pulled out this year um, that the Board of Finance pulled out was related to our concern that there were operating costs that hadn't been fully vetted yet associated with those police scanners so for next year's budget you do worksheets on each project and that's greatly appreciated but let's add to that um, what we really believe the operating costs are going to be and if there's none let's say it and put it in writing that there'll be no impact to operating costs so those would be the two things and we'll plan on meeting in December or earlier if possible I mean I think it, if we can um, you let us know if you can, if you'll be ready before December but no later than December we didn't get the capital numbers this year until March yeah. so you know starting in December will at least get us all at the same page early enough to make sure that we can understand um, yeah, happy to work with you in a collaborative manner and to get your guidance earlier because as we have your guidance we could then uh, address our budgets you know we do follow a fairly strict dance through the charter so a lot of the dates are dictated by the charter so I don't know that I'll have exact numbers for you that but we'll have enough to have a conversation about yeah, to understand your guidance and what right. you're thinking in terms of uh, goals for us yeah I think especially you know as Barbara said since we know we're already over and we're gonna have to find places to cut the capital in it's significant millions of capital <laughs> then conceptually we can have that conversation early even if it's not down to the nickels and dimes right. but the capital projects may go down by the millions before it gets presented again in December so that I yeah, you know there's time we can do like 15-year bondings we can have conversations about um, those are all concepts well. that we should bet right but that's part of why we want to meet in December to have that Okay, um, the next item on our agenda for this evening is an appointment of auditor for fiscal year 2016. And um, given our change that happened and our transition in the, um, uh, yes, in our finance director role and with the departure of our previous finance director, we did not get out to bid in time this year there actually is a state requirement that we file with OPM no later than 30 days before the fiscal year end which is June 1 filing date our auditor so at this meeting we need to approve the auditor and since we didn't go out to bid we don't really have any option other than to stay with the auditor that we have this year um, but I would like to reiterate uh, let's hope that we don't lose our finance director again next year during this time frame <laughs> <laughs> and that I have been saying for years and, I, and I'm gonna say it again we have to go out to bid we it's it's an obligation of yep. the town mm -hmm. and we should be making sure that e this auditor does a good job we may stay with them but we at least ought to make sure that we are getting competitive bids right. and the pricing now they have not had a price increase for how many years have they four years. for four years now um, and they have asked for what is it two percent right, so the total between the town and board is forty nine thousand nine hundred dollars uh, they're asking for a two percent increase which comes to a thousand about thousand dollar increase okay and in prior years we did give them a lot of work on special projects we have none lined up for this year so right. that's a piece of this too I think that um, they'll be doing less work for the town in total thus we did have a cut as you saw the things we found one of the things we found now that we have their price is a reduction in the budget for um, there so can I have a motion to approve um, we have Bloom Shapiro for fiscal year uh, 16 audit so moved second any discussion all those in favor aye, aye. aye. okay that passes and we've already done the turf which was item 5 we did that as we went through it 
Um, and then we ha wanted to distribute the, this is a special meeting, so we can't bring anything else up in this evening's meeting. But we did want to distribute, um, not for discussion this evening, but we will have, um, and I know Linda, you wanted to have our members who are representatives on um, the pension board to come in and actually spend some time talking about pensions. And we'd like to understand the minimum uh, projections because under the charter, we are responsible for uh, the reserves, the uh, pension reserves. Would you like to hand those out? At your oh, we already have them. Thank you. Okay. So this is reading material for next month's meeting, and we plan to put this on the agenda. So I know we only have one of our representatives here, um, but maybe share with Rob that we'd like to have you to kind of walk us through an update or get whoever else here you'd like to have here. If you want to have the pension advisor here, um, and if we want to bring Milliman in, we can talk about that. Okay. Um, but let's make sure that gets on the agenda for our next meeting. And having covered the minutes on the special meeting um, and seeing nothing else, can, can I have... Can I just also, uh, not for discussion or action, but just at the next meeting, point out that we, sh we should go back to dealing with a lot of the policy, written policies that we, mm -hmm. yep. of course, didn't do while we were focused on the budget. But um, right. those of us who have policy areas Assignments. assigned to us, right. and and the one that we voted on most recently, which was sort of how this, what, what's it called, the rules of procedure or something. I, I know we adopted it, but if we could see a final copy in its final, yeah. final form. Can I give you that? That would be good. Can I give it to you or so, I'll have to check. Okay. I, can I just say real quickly though, I mean, I, I just want to say how much I appreciate the amount of work that you put into this uh, this year and Linda, you as well. Mm -hmm. um, and I really want to thank Sean too for, um, I think it's extraordinary work in the face of adversity and coming in as he did. Pinch uh, just hitting. <laughs> awesome work and the communications on what was happening on the state budget side it's very helpful it was ex I agree yeah extraordinarily useful so thank you I second that thank you yeah okay anything else That's it. can I get a motion to adjourn so moved. Second. second all those in favor Aye. Aye. thank you wow. Wow. What is that?